to another episode of Relics Radio. This is a family-friendly show, so the entire family can join us as we talk metal detecting, relic, and treasure hunting. You can also call into the show at 270-495-0315 or join in the chat and post any comments or questions you might have. Relics Radio is also now syndicated on the Cutting Edge Radio Network, and is broadcast around the world. You're listening to Relics Radio of Southern Kentucky and Middle Tennessee. And you are listening to Relics Radio. We want to welcome all of our live listeners that are on Spreaker. And we want to welcome our listeners, our syndicated listeners on the Cutting Edge Radio Network. And we also want to welcome all of you who will be listening to the archive show on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Podbean, uh, Apple Podcasts, wherever there are podcasts. We are there because we are the world famous Relics Radio. And you guessed it, tonight's the night. Yep. Prizes, surprises. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we got a super great guest, guys. And somebody's going to win a Nocta Macro and Fibio. Yep, yep. That's right. And we want to thank Tim Henderson and Murray Branch Outdoors for sponsoring this giveaway. And we want to give a special thanks to Mark Hoover. All of his hard work behind the scenes made this night special and made this night possible. And a very special thanks to Nocta Macro for donating this Amphibio and making this night very special for all of us. And we want to thank uh, Delic Gondule for everything that she has done for us. Uh, we really appreciate you guys. And... We want to thank you, our listeners, our supporters, uh, our past wonderful guests, for being a part of the Relics Radio family. Just thanks to all of you. You know, we normally don't do this, but uh, we're going to start the show, but we're going to begin the show by letting a very special guest do a short self-introduction. Hello, world. <laughs> Every, How's it going, Darnell? Everybody knows now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got Hello, world. Yeah, we got Mr. Amphibio in right here with us tonight. Going to help us give away this uh, not to macro uh, amphibio detector. And by the way, Brent Parrish, you were the first one on the guest the guest uh, post that we put out. We're going to send you a Relics Radio cooling towel, courtesy of Detectees dot com. Uh, get with Mark Hoover in the chat and uh, give him your address and everything, and then uh, we will make sure that we get that out to you. What a night. What a night, ain't it, Jeff? It sure is, man. We've got storms going through. Uh, Seven, he, he right before the show, he was running up and down the steps, hooking all of his uh, cords to the generator just in case we needed it. And then, uh, of course, Darnell, <laughs> man, he, he's going to be a great guest. He really is. I can't wait. And that uh, uh, amphibio... I was watching his videos today, and I mean, he knows it pretty much like the back of his hands. So he it's, he it's is gonna a, be a great. Show. He is a master with it. And let me just put a quick comment in, and then Jeff, you can go ahead and uh, start on segment one, asking the the questions that we've kind of talked about, uh, you know, but prior to the show and everything. But if we go off the air, if we lose power. It will probably take about 10 minutes to get the generator cranked up. I've already got everything out there, and it's ready to go. But it'll take about 10 minutes to reboot. That is, unless we lose Internet service. But the storms have kind of gone west of us, and I think we're all right tonight. So 
we're going to give it a shot. We really are. So go ahead, Jeff. Get us started. Well, Darnell, man, uh, it's glad to have you as a guest. And uh, I guess everybody was wondering, tell us uh, how long you've been detecting and uh, how did you get started? Well, I, I haven't been really detecting that long. I've been detecting probably five years. Um, I started out, I was uh, cornrow hunting, but I would watch metal detecting videos. And it, it kind of drew an interest to me, but I wasn't sure if that was something that I would enjoy, really. And so I went and bought myself a metal detector at Big Five when when, when they were here. They're, they're closed now. And I went and got me a Bounty Hunter Sharpshooter 2. That's the detector I started out with. And I got that detected, and I went out a few times, and I found my first coin, which was a, I think it was a copper cent, you know, or something. And I got and I got that, and I was kind of excited about that, and I started finding more coins. And, and at the same time, I was watching metal detecting videos, and I was, I'm not finding the stuff that they're finding. And why their detector look different than my detector? Because I didn't know it was, you know, all these other type of detectors. I thought they all looked like this bounty hunter. And and so I started watching uh, a channel called the Hunter GT, and he was doing a lot of detecting, a uh, lot of detector reviews. And so I, I started seeing more detectors, and so I said, well, before I invest in another detector, let me see if I'm I'm gonna like this, and I, I just didn't want to buy a detector and have it sit in the corner. And so I I, I bought the Sharpshooter too. I was detecting with it, but I wanted you know, a, a better detector, and so uh, I, I found my first civil with that Bounty Hunter 2. It was a 1952 Rose. I still have it, and on the, I got it in 2x2, two two and it says, first civil ever found metal detected. And it was a 1952 Rose, and I found it in a school. And But my detector didn't have, you know, depth meter, didn't have a, a VDI, didn't have a pinpoint button, it didn't have none of this, so I started getting more and more into it the more I was finding clad and stuff like that. And so I started saving the clad in a little bucket. And then I put some more money with it after I, you know, got you know, enough change in there where it wouldn't take anymore. And then I went and purchased the Fisher F44. And so when I got that detector, it had some of the features that the other detectors, detectors had. And so... I was doing real good with it. I just didn't like the coil on it. it they call it a teardrop coil or a snow cone coil. Or, you know, it's that looks like a teardrop. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I, 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 so I, I, I was talking to a few people on YouTube through email, like the Hunter GT, and, and then I was talking to Craig, who 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 has a detector store called uh, Show Me Treasure. And so I was talking to him about different detectors, and, and that's who I purchased my F-44 from. And so I wanted to get a coil because I was watching the Hoover Boys, and I seen this big coil that they had on the AT Pro. And so I was talking to Craig about the coil, so I ended up getting a 12 by 13 uh, coil f- for the F-44. And so I started finding more stuff and starting to see how they was finding uh, different items. So I was more watching the YouTube videos to learn. I wasn't worried about what they were finding. I was seeing how they were doing it. And so I started picking up on it, and I started doing it. So every day after work, I would take that detector out, and I started training my ears on how it sound. And so I, I got really good at that, and I was always a bullion um, stacker. I buy a lot of silver coins, a lot of uh, gold coins. And so I was a stacker, but not a metal. De- I wasn't into metal detecting, but I was metal detecting. You kind of see what I'm saying? It, it wasn't a big thing to me at the time. And and so my house had got broken into, and they took the whole safe, everything that was in my safe, they took it off. Oh, and the the extra set of keys to my car was in that safe. Two weeks later, they came back and stole my car. <laughs> so I had all my all my silver bullion, gold coins, probably over about ten grand worth of 
coins and stuff in there. They took all that. They took my metal detector. They took my car. And so I contacted Craig again, and we were talking metal detectors. And he said, well, I have a, I was, I was going to get the AT Pro. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, I have a, a macro red racer that I, it's on display, but I give you a good deal on it. And I said, okay. He said, when do you want to buy it? I said, I want to buy it right now. And so he said, okay. So he sent me an invoice. I got the racer. And so I wanted to learn that detective. I wanted to learn it. So every day I was out at the park, I started using the parks as the training ground. So I would just go and dig and dig anything that was repeatable, anything that beeped, I dug it. And so I, I got better and better and better and better with that detector. And so that's when, every, well, I wouldn't say that's when everything took off because I only had that red racer for probably two months before the impact come out. And just to let everybody know, Nocta Macro, Nocta, this is before there was Nocta Macro, it was either Nocta or Macro. And before, uh, they didn't send me any, det every detector I had, I bought myself except the Amphibio. They did send me the Amphibio. But all the other Macro, I have the, the Red Racer, I have the Impact, I have the Multi Cruiser, and I have the Amphibio. And so all those detectors I bought except for one, they sent me the Amphibio. Because everybody was saying, oh, you getting those free detectors because they're sponsored. They're spon no, they, they, I wasn't sponsored by no the Micro. I was just, I just loved the product. And I was learning detectors, and I didn't want to jump into a learning curve. And so I kept buying these detectors. Well, when I got the impact, that's when everything got a little bit better. That's when I started uh, doing things different. The first thing I noticed Every time I would go to a park, there was always somebody at the park metal detecting. Well, that was competition for me. I didn't want any competition. And so I would look on YouTube, and I would look at these other guys that was having success in metal detecting where they wasn't in the parks. They were at different permissions. They were researching and all that. So I said, that's what I need to do. And so I started doing all that, and I was finding silver more than I am now on YouTube. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> I was finding I was finding this stuff before I even got on YouTube. I it took me a whole year, probably a year and a half before I even got on YouTube. I wanted to learn the detector. I wanted to learn how it sounded. I wanted to learn how to rely on the VDI. I wanted to learn everything I could about metal detecting and then put it into work and that's what I started doing and that's how I got really good at it in a short period of time every day every day every day and so I made a test garden and I put every little thing that I can think of in the ground and I wanted to see how it sound I wanted to see how it rang up on this detector and then I started going out and I started knowing how it sound and then I would look at the BDI and see if it matches. I see if it was choppy. I see if it was clean. I see if it was masked. I would turn this way and that way and try to get angles on targets. And as I got really good at it, then my silver count started going up. I started finding more stuff. Then I started researching. Uh, I, I wanted to eliminate the competition, so I started hitting private permissions. I started doing door knocking until I went to one person's house. I went to this guy's house and I knocked on his door. I told him what I did. I showed him, I didn't show him, but I told him what type of tools that I used and things like that. And he told me, this is why I stopped door knocking. <laughs> he told me, I told him what I did. He says, you cannot dig in my yard. No ends are allowed here. <laughs> well, of course, we all know what the N word is. And so when he told me that, I told him, you know, I apologize. You know, I, I'm not here for no ill will. You know, so I bothered you, and I left. I didn't, I didn't want to cause a scene. It, I mean, if one person was being ignorant, wasn't no need in both of us being ignorant. So <laughs> you no, know, that, I just left it yeah, alone. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And you know, there are people like mm -hmm. that in the world that uh, just don't care about anybody. And 
you know, don't care about people's feelings. I mean, it, it was okay for him to say, you, you know, I don't want anybody digging in my yard, but uh, that's as far really yeah. as it should have went. Hey, guys, we need to take a commercial break, and we'll be right back. You know, T-shirts are a perfect way to get your brand recognized. Whether you're talking about a business, a club, a sports team, your YouTube channel, or whatever. But you may have asked, where can I get quality, affordable shirts on demand? Well, I'm glad you asked. Relics Radio uses DetectTees.com for all of our T-shirts, long sleeve shirts, and hoodies. That's D E T E C. T-E-E-S.com. Ken and Mark Guthrie make quality shirts that last, they ship quick, and best of all, they're affordable. So if you need customized apparel, then go to DetectTees.com and be sure and tell them that Relics Radio sent you. And by the way, guys, uh, DetectTees.com is now making Relics Radio cooling towels. It's summer. It's hot. I don't care where you're at. It's hot. And uh, you need one of those things. I tell you, they work really, really, really good. And uh, Darnell, I want to ask you uh, in this segment here, I want to ask you why you like the Amphibio and some of the uh, features that it had that uh, that it has that some of your other ones didn't have. But before I do that, Mark Hoover said, if you'd start uh, magnet fishing, you might find that safe that had all your stuff in it, and you might find your car. <laughs> <laughs> He's crazy, I tell you. Well, well they, they did find my car, but they didn't find my safe. Oh, okay, <laughs> it's it's at the closest bridge to you, wherever water is at. It's right off of that, and they got, I guess they got the stuff out of oh. it and threw it over the bridge. Okay, well, tell Mark to go ahead and put that magnet in the mail so I can go try to find it. <laughs> That's right. <yeah. laughs> what do you like about the Amphibio? What features does it have that really, really impress you? Well, the, the Amphibio, it, it reminds me of my impact. Uh, it pretty much has the same same modes as the impact except the impact has a mode called a vlx1 vlx2 um it, it has 12 different modes and it has the 99 uh it, the impact doesn't have the eud feature which i like on the amphibio and the multi-cruiser uh, a lot of people won't use the uh the eud feature but it's a good feature if you're trying to dig a deep iffy target on the Amphibio and the Multi Cruiser, they're a lot more stable as far as VDI numbers than they is on the Impact. But the Impact, as far as depth, is it's a deep detector along with the Amphibio. But it hits a little bit better on nickels than the Impact the Amphibio does. The Amphibio, with that new design coil that it has, it makes it. Uh, a lot sensitive. It's a lot sensitive than the impact. I, at first, I was kind of iffy on that new design coil that they had on the the uh, impact and the multi cruiser. But that coil, that coil on that Amphibio, being the size that it is, can really, really work good in trashy areas and i didn't think it it would work that good in trashy areas and it works pretty good in that trashy areas that the the note i mean the the impact it, it also can separate and, and people wanted me to do a a, a video on, on comparison between the impact and the amphibia which I, I i won't do that because they're both good detectors and i think a lot of people wanted me to do that so that it would kind of give them the leeway of which one they wanted to buy. You can't go wrong with either one of them. If you if you do water hunting, I would go with the Amphibio. I mean, yeah, with the Amphibio or the Multi Cruiser. If you don't and you just do land, then then the Impact is a good detector. It's it's a deep detector, good separation, fast recovery. It, it's a really really good detector. But a lot of people think that the Impact is more complicated than the Multi Cruiser. And a lot of people can't figure out the amphibio. 
the amphibio is very easy, very, very easy to learn. If you're coming from a, another uh, detector like, say, the My Labs or the Dais, you know, the Fishers, the Whites, the, the tones are different, and you have to adjust. You have to adjust. It's a learning curve. It's a learning curve, and a lot of people get frustrated because they're already used to a different detector with a different sound. But if you get if you get that sound down, you'll see that that amphibio is right up there with the best of them. It, it's a good detective. It's a very, very good detective. And somebody uh, here tonight is probably going to get an amphibio for the first time. I mean, it's the first time that they're going to have one in their hands and own one and get to uh, hunt with it. What things did you find that were difficult for you to learn whenever, of course, you came from another knock to macro machine, so it was probably an easy transition. But when you first started using knock to macro products, what uh, what gave you problems that, uh, you know, that you had to kind of work through to start with? Well, well, when I started out, I had the, the Red Racer. And and really, the tones really wasn't that different from the Fisher. It, it it was just a slight slight difference, but I didn't have the I didn't have I was still kind of training myself when I was transitioning from the F forty four to the Macro Racer. When the when the Fisher got stolen, then I had no choice but to learn the Macro and. It, it was it's, it's very simple detector. It's really an entry level at the time. It wasn't, but now it's pretty much an entry level detector. You know, four four modes. You know, it, it's really nothing to adjust on it. You just have to tune your ears to the sound. And the way to do that is just to go out and just dig targets. I mean, you, it wasn't hard. The amphibio is it's not hard. Whoever wins this amphibio, there's a lot of ways that you can adjust the tones on that amphibio to, to your liking. You can, you can, you can set that amphibio up to, to the tones that you like. The only thing it, it's one mode that I think that a lot of people might stray away from on, on the, the amphibio and that's the 99 tones. I don't think a lot of people will use that mode and a lot of people are using three tone on because it's just three tones and it's, it sounds more like a detector that they probably came from or, something like that but on that on that amphibio it has so many ways that you can adjust it to your liking to, if, if you put in the time to learn the detective it's not a complicated detective to learn at all it's really a simple detective so darnell that the amphibio it goes all the way up to 99 tone yeah yeah it has a, it has a 99 tone mode on it uh the the only thing about the 99 tone, now I've, I've been putting out videos on, on, on these, these modes because pretty much every day I get a message through messenger or email saying that they just got the amphibio. How do I adjust this? How do I do that? How do I make this do this and that? The 99 tones, there's not really a lot of adjusting you can do on the 99 tones. Um, you can you can notch, but it doesn't do any good to run ninety nine tones if you're gonna notch anything. Mm-hmm. Um, you can you can you you you'll get uh, one. It's it's like um, how can I explain this where they will understand it? Um, it 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 opens up the detector where everything that you dig is gonna have a tone to it. And that would make it a lot difficult for, that's why people, a lot of, that they might stray away from it because it's so many tones on just about every single target that you dig is going to have a different tone to it. Mm-hmm. So it's going to take a lot of time to get used to a tone that, okay, that's that. Okay, this is this. Okay, this is this. And this is that. So people, I don't think people will, will really put in the time to learn 99 tones. Uh, it's, to me, it, it's a it's a simple mode, but I wouldn't um, I wouldn't use it as much as the modes I use now. How many modes does the Amphibio have? The Amphibio it has it has a, a Gen mode. It has a three tone. It has a four tone. It has a five tone. It has a, a, a deep mode. It has the ninety nine tones. 
it's it's six modes on the the uh the um, studio. It has six modes. Um, I think it's six. Um. Yeah, you have a gen mode. Uh, no, you have a two tone. You have a two tone. I left two tone out. So, so you yeah. have your, you have your gen. You, you have the, your gen mode. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I had the uh, Macro Racer 2, and then, of course, I, I mean, I really loved that machine and done very well with it, and I always just pretty much just run it in two-tone. Well, well, that's what a lot of people have been running. Uh, the Amphibio, they, they told me, on, on two-tone and three-tone. For for one, the three-tone, is it's, it's, it's a lot quieter. It's, it's not as chat. It, it don't chat at all. It's, it's super quiet on three-tone, but it's not the deepest mode. And then they say, well, I run the Amphibio wide open, 99. You don't have to run the detect in 99. I think, I think the depth cutoff is like probably 94. Uh, you can put a coin in the ground at 9 inches and, and hit it at 92 and turn it up to 99. Is, you're going to get the same depth. Running your detector wide open like that, on the Amphibio, since it's a really high gain detector, it's really sensitive. You're going to start picking up all everything around that, that coil. It's going to start picking it up when you run it that high. You can run the Amphibio like at 80, 85, and you're still going to get great depth. Now, four tone, it's a little chattery. It's a little chattery, but you can turn that down, the chattering down, by lowering your, your gain. If you lower your gain, you won't get as much chattering. Now, a five tone. Now it's quiet. A lot of people don't use five tone, but I just did a video on five tone and show you how it opens up the 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 uh, scale to where it would put trash areas in the trash segments, and your good finds in the good area. If if you watch that video on five tone, you'll see how quiet it is and it's deep. Now it's not as deep as deep mode, but it's deeper than three tone but not as fast as three tone but it's fast <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah when you put it in deep mode how chattery is it deep mode is it's it's chattery it's it, it's it's a little chattery depending on where you at too if, if you in a if you in you know doing some you know door knocking and you trying to run deep mode you're going to get a lot of chattering because it's a lot of interference in in a yard the best place to run deep mode if you're out in the field. If you're out in the field somewhere where there's not a lot of electrical wires and, you know, all the cables and all that running, then deep mode is, is a really good mode if you're trying to get deep. Now, five-tone and four-tone to get deep, too. If you use, a lot of people don't know about the EUD feature on Amphibio. If you use that feature, if, if you use that feature, you'll see how it brings that target, whatever you, you're trying to, figure out what it is it'll bring that target target to life it, it will bring it up you you can hear it and it'll make like a cricket sound it's, it's a real hot pitch when it's when it's over that target and you look at that bdi and you'll see oh well that's deep iron or oh it's now it's in the 50s you know it brings that target to life and and a lot of a lot of things people don't know about the studio too it don't like to pinpoint trash some trash, when you try to pinpoint it, it won't pinpoint it. It'll just, uh, 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 you know, it'll make that sound. It's telling you it's trash. Mm -hmm. And on, uh, uh, when you're swinging across these bottle caps, if you listen, you'll hear a flutter. You'll hear a fluttering. When it rolls off that target, it'll flutter. Like, you know, you'll know that's a bottle cap. Or you'll know that it's not, you know, what, what you're looking for. It'll, it'll flutter on trash. It's the sound that you listen for coming off the target. Now, a good target is going to be crisp. It's going to be clean. You have no doubt that it's, it's what you're looking for. If it's, you know, trash, or aluminum cans, you know, stuff like that, when you roll off that target, it's going to flutter. It's, you're going to know that that's trash. It's not clear. It's not crisp. It's fluttered. So listen, listen for that sound if you're swinging over a target and you're not sure. Uh, also, when you swing over the over a target with the amphibio, this is another way you can identify trash. When you swing it over a target and it resets, it'll make a high, it'll make like a high pitch when it's resetting. 
And when you swing over that target again and you pinpoint it and then come off the target and then go back over the target, it'll tell you by the BDI that it's way lower than what you first saw when you're swinging over, swinging over, swinging over, or it's an 85, 86, 85, 86. And you pinpoint it and come off the target and go back on the target. If it drops back down in the 60s, you know it's trash. I've noticed that, especially in five-tone, it does that a lot. And it yeah. cut my trash pretty much in half. Now, there's one guy did message me and say, well, I want one of those detectors that you don't dig trash. I said, oh, you want one of those wish detectors? That wish detector. He said, wish detector? Like, yeah. He said, I never heard of that. I was like, yeah, because there's no such thing as one. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, we got to take a commercial break, and after the commercial break, we, we might want to uh, talk about the uh, Nomad program, um, Nocta Macro. So, uh, but we're taking a commercial break, and we'll be right back. If your passion is metal detecting, then you know how much your success is based on the equipment you use. Let my buddy Tim Henderson of Murray Branch Outdoors in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, help you with that. Tim is an authorized dealer of Mine Lab, Garrett, XP Deus, and Macro Detectors and Supplies, and also carries many aftermarket items. Murray Branch Outdoors is not only competitive in their prices, but the service after the sale is second to none. Tim not only sells detectors, he uses them, and so he can answer any question that you might have. Murray Branch Outdoors also deals in used detectors, and he'll take your old detector in on trade when you decide to upgrade. So give Tim Henderson of Murray Branch Outdoors a call at 615-948-4611 or visit his website at www.murraybranchoutdoors.com. And be sure and tell him Relics Radio sent you. And guys, once again, Murray Branch Outdoors, we want to thank them and Tim Henderson for sponsoring this Not to Macro Amphibio giveaway tonight. And we're going to get to that. We're kind of, I was kind of sitting here waiting around for a thunderstorm to come and blow us off the air so we could keep it, Jeff. But I think the storms, <laughs> I think the storms are gone now. Hey, uh, Darnell, yeah, we're we're interested in Not to Macro's new Nomad program. What is that, and how does it work? Uh, nomads, it's it's a program that they're going to start doing. It's where they they're going to have a region where a a, a team of of people that they select are going to be in a certain area to where they're going to be testers. And in order to qualify for that, you have to fill out an application. They'll review the application. Uh, They ask you what type of detectors do you use or what type of detector you're using now. Do you beach hunt? Do you water hunt? Do you land hunt or both? You know, they ask you all these questions and then after you submit your application, they'll get back to you and tell you if you're going to be a nomad. Uh, that's pretty much uh, as far as the information that I've gotten on it, uh, what they do and, and what it is. Uh, I haven't heard anything back on my application yet. Uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> no. <laughs> D-Lake, are you listening? No. But uh, <laughs> I, that that that's... That's pretty much what the nomads are. They're, they're going to be testers. Well, I tell you what, we are going to lobby uh, Delic to uh, name you as one of those nomads. I can't think of anybody that uh, I've seen on YouTube that does a better job with it, a better job of explaining what you're doing. And uh, you're, you're just an instructive detectorist. I mean, whenever you watch one of your videos, I've never watched one that I didn't come away learning something. And you learn something no matter what machine that you're using, just the techniques and everything that you use. But um, what would be involved in that? I mean, would you have to travel a lot or what? Well, see, I, I, I'm not sure because I haven't I haven't received any more information. I don't know if you have to travel. I don't know if you'll be doing uh, um, um, like uh, what you call those uh, where you go and you set up booths and you explain the detectors. Um, 
Yeah, um, I don't know what the technical term for yeah, it is. One but, of those. Yeah, 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 one of them. Yeah, one of those. Yeah, yeah. one of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 haven't, I haven't received any more information on on the nomads except for what I said. So I don't, I don't know what what all involved in it as far as being a tester in certain regions. Um, I don't know if if you are allowed to use other um, manufacturers. I don't know any of that part of it yet. Uh, I'm sure after I receive an answer, they're going to run down, okay, this is the do's and don'ts. Uh, this is what we have you do. This is what we don't want you to do. You know, so, so I'm not sure on, on, on the rest of it. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that they will explain that uh, to you. But uh, I tell you what, guys, you know, everybody that is in the chat and everybody that is listening to the show, uh, we could probably lobby for Darnell uh, with not to macro, macro. We want him to be one of those representatives. We want him to be a nomad on that because, like I say, I can't think of anybody that's uh, better equipped to do that. Can you, Jeff? No, uh, I can't think of one. And, of course, I'm pretty sure there's a petition being signed uh, spread around right now. Uh, everybody <laughs> wants Darnell to be one. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you, well, you, well. See, uh, see, I, I don't. A lot of people think that I'm already sponsored by Nota because I use their their product. Uh, it's it's not that I'm sponsored by. I just like the product. They're, they're good detectors. Uh, the the technology on them is getting better. They're making a statement with these detectors. Now, now they coming out with with uh, the Simplex, which is an entry level detector. Uh, for that price range, that detector is going to be a good entry level detector for anybody who's getting into the hobby. The simplex is, and I, I thought it might be out already, but I think it's going to come out. I'm not sure, maybe next month, but it's supposed to be out already. I'm I'm thinking, and so they're also getting ready to come out. I don't know if, if you knew about the, the the contest that they have. It's over now. But they were looking for the name for the new detective that they're going to come out with. That's going to run just like the the Equinox 800, where it's going to run on all frequencies at one time. Yeah, and they I've were seen taking that. applications. I... Yeah, they were taking applications. Who, who can ever come up with the best name for that detector? They were going to win one of those detectors. Did they ever come up with a name? I, I knew I heard of the of the contest, but uh, I never did know if they it was over or not, you know, if they ever come up with a name. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's closed. I think it closed in January or February, but no name yet. That, As far as I know, that there's no name. Oh, I don't even know if they even picked a name yet. So I, I know it's still in, 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 in the, in the work and they're, they're still working kinks out. They're still getting the technology, I guess, together and all that. But I, I don't know what name they chose for the new detective. Yeah. Have you used or seen the uh, pulse dive unit yet? I have seen the pulse dive. I, I have seen it, the pulse dive. Uh, I don't have one. I, I'm going to get one. Um, I don't know if I would. That's what I was debating on because they make two models. They make one with the, the dive pole uh, post on it where you can go up underwater and all that and metal tech with it. Or you can just get just the pinpointer. I, w- I really just want the pinpointer because it pairs up to your detective. And so mm-hmm. I'm not sure which one I'm going to get, but I'm going to get one of them. What kind of ground do you hunt out there is, uh, in Texas? Is it mineralized out there in Texas very much? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's very harsh there here. And that's what that's what impressed me with, with the, the micro and the detectives. They work good in that harsh dirt, even the impact works good in hard dirt. Uh, the multi-cruiser works good in hard dirt. The amphibio, I was kind of iffy on it because of the coil, but it does good in harsh dirt. <laughs> and I'll tell you something about West Texas, because uh, I was born and raised just about 110 miles south of where Darnell is. He's in Amarillo, Texas, and I was in Lubbock, Texas, and it is flat as a tabletop. And uh, you can't yep. see a tree for miles and miles. Somebody said, do they have any trees out there in Lubbock? And I said, yeah, they had one. Is in the museum. They charge you a dollar to come and see it. <laughs> so you don't have to deal with the roots. But uh, I tell you. No, it, 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 
it's flat land out here. Yeah, and it's been fertilized for a thousand years, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So you, you're dealing with some rust, some some harsh ground conditions here, and that's what I tell everybody. Uh, I never tell anyone on my channel or message or email whatever. You need to get this detected. You need to get this detected. I never tell anybody that. I tell them to get the detector that works best for you. Whichever detector you you most comfortable with, the one that you know, one that you the best detector is the one you know the best anyway. That's right. You know, it it, it doesn't matter what detector you're using. It's the ground condition, your location. There's a lot of things that play along with choosing a metal detector. Are you a water hunter? Uh, are you gonna Are you gonna get a detector and sit in the corner? Are you gonna you know, a lot of people go get these these detectors, and they're not finding things that they see other people finding, and they'll throw it up for sale, or they'll just put it in the corner and wait for the next one to come out. You know, if you don't get out and use that detector, you won't learn that detector. You and that detector got to be one, got to be a team, and you got to know what that detector's telling you. If you don't know what that detector's telling you, you're not going to find what you see other people finding. And that's what I took from when I was watching other people's metal detectors. I got to learn that detector, so I was out with it constantly, constantly, constantly. And, you know, a lot of people, they, they, they won't research. Research is a key to, to having some success. You know, you can't go to the parks all the time that you know that people hunt, been hunting, you know, for years. You have to try to find new spots, and that's what I try to do. I try, I'm always looking for new areas to go detect. You know, one guy told me, man, they say you find too much silver. Well, if I keep going to the same old spot, I don't put myself in a position of finding me. So I got to keep looking and keep looking, you know, and, and that's how you get success. If, if you can find spots that people are most likely not to detect and you detect that spot, it could become a honey hole. You just never know until you swing. And that's, that's how I found a lot of spots that I found. And now, you know, there are people here in Amarillo that probably in some in the chat. They they watch my videos and then they go right to the spot I'm 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 detecting. <laughs> they go right there. <laughs> yep, everybody has that problem. And then, buddy, I, if I knew where that car wash was, I mean, I would head straight there. I, I would. <laughs> but Darnell, don't you think that the best advice that we could give brand new detectorist is first of all dig everything that is a repeatable signal That's and right. pay, pay attention to the signal then eventually mm-hmm. i mean you're going to have to dig hundreds of targets thousands of targets until you learn right. what your machine is telling you uh what kind of target and get into a game with yourself as you listen to those tones uh start trying to guess what that target's going to be and it'll make you pay attention to the tones Exactly. That that's pretty much the exact words I tell everybody who messages. I, if you would see how many messages I get a day on metal detecting, you'll be like, "This is unbelievable." I tell people all the time: don't rely solely on the VDI. Rely on your ears. Your ears is what's going to tell you what it is. You you got to dig a lot a lot of targets if you want to. If that's why I say the park is your training ground. Go to the park. There's all type of things you can find in the park. You can find rings. You can find clad. You can find pull tabs. You can pop tops. That's how you learn that detector. If if I give you my settings that I use and I get asked all the time what settings you use, give me your settings. If I give you those settings, how much success are you going to have with those settings if you don't know the detector? If you don't know the sound detector is making, what good is the settings going to do you? They're not going to do you any good. You're going to get frustrated. And they're not going to sound, I mean, a target's not going to sound the same. It it depends on how deep it is. It depends on what right. what's around it. If it's got some iron or some nails like the old sites that we hunt here, nails can mass targets, you know. I've had reals ring up from anywhere from like 83 is a perfect signal for that. But I found one cut uh, Spanish silver that rang up 35 on AT Pro. And the reason that it did was because it had a bunch of nails around it. And I was only getting it one way. And if I hadn't dug what I call an iffy target, 
but I, I kept hearing that I kept hearing that beep come in, and uh, you know I'll look at the numbers, but I very seldom hunt by numbers. I hunt by sound. That's right. Ninety percent right. of our sites is, I mean, uh, nail infested, and uh, most of them square nails, and then uh, bent nails, and of course you know a bent nail, man, it'll ring up just like a silver dollar. But I mean, it's that's uh, right. You just have to find something to get through them uh, nails. Uh, and I, you're exactly right. And, and, and a lot of people, and I know my videos be long, and that's because I, I try to show people what I'm listening to, what the VDI is showing, and, and how I'm circling that target. If, if I come across an iffy signal that's worth investigating, I'm going to hit it one way, and then I'm going to start turning on that target to see if I can get an angle, because if you turn on it, you just might hit that that angle to where it's really coming through if it's masked by uh, uh, nails or foil or, or any type of trash. If you turn on that target, you can get that target to come in. You know, if you just go one way and say, oh, it's, it, that's trash, and you keep moving, then a, a detector is that seasoned, that knows what he's doing, and he'd go across that iffy target, and he start turning on that target and trying to get an angle, he's going to get what you missed. And I showed a lot of guys that that came here detective with me and said, "Man, you you know what you're doing on that detective because it, I don't have the patience to investigate a target. If it don't sound good the first couple of times I swing over, I'm gonna keep going." And I say, like, "Yep," and I'm gonna come behind you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right, I'm and okay. buddy, there's no telling how many times uh, Lloyd and I've done that. I know Lloyd; he dug a he got a little bitty squeaker. It was just just in one little one way, and it. Of course, he dug it, and it, it turned out to be a large scent. And then after he, he popped it out of the hole, it was still in the bottom of the hole, probably, what, three inches deep. And the detector wouldn't pick it up because there were so many nails around it. And yep. then he just caught it the mm-hmm. right way, yep. and then he done circles, and then that's how he got that one large scent. So. It, took me <laughs> it took me 150 years to learn that technique, but I finally got it down that, that your, best discri- your best discriminator is your shovel. Dig it. Hey, guys, we've got to take another commercial break. We'll be right back. If you want to keep up with what's going on in the metal detecting world, then you need to be a subscriber to American Digger magazine. Butch and Anita Holcomb are the publishers of the magazine and have won awards for three straight years for being the best digger magazine on the market. American Digger magazine is available in both print and digital formats. So no matter where you live in the world, you can enjoy the latest happenings in the hobby. You can get in touch with American Digger Magazine by going to americandigger.com or give them a call at 770-362-8671. And be sure and tell them that you heard it on Relix Radio. And by the way, guys, I am now the uh, producer and the co-host of American Digger Magazine's Relic Roundup every Monday night at 9 o'clock with Butch Holcomb and Jeff Lupert. And I'll take this opportunity to also say that American Digger Magazine is having the Chattanooga Relic Show July the 27th and 28th. And we're going to be there and we're going to be live doing live broadcasts for... Uh, well, for American Diggers Relic Roundup for Relics Radio, and I think we're going to resurrect History Seekers for one day too, and have Heath and uh, and Scott back in. But uh, I, I tell you, Darnell, we've got another segment to go to. But there's another question that I'd like to ask you before we get into that. What would you consider the best thing that you've ever found? Um, I think. The well, I have two. Um, one was uh, with my impact. I dug a. It was eighteen carat and sterling silver, twenty three hundred dollar bracelet. Man. I was digging in a. I was digging in a small town. I got it on a live dig, and it was. It was wasn't deep. Uh, maybe three, four inches, uh, it was cutting out because I had the, the gold, that gold segment, 
with pull tabs and all that come i had it notched out so it was cutting out but it was hitting the silver and it's cutting out so i thought it was trash but when i was turning on it i would get a high signal and i was like i'm gonna dig this and popped it up and it was a 18 karat gold and silver bracelet that was probably my best find that's a pretty good <laughs> yeah, <I'd say> so. <laughs> that's, that's yeah. a doggone good <laughs> Uh, Darnell, uh, I heard through the grapevine you do a little uh, corn roll hunting. So, I, that that's how that's that's what I was that's what I was doing before before uh, I started metal detecting. Yeah, how'd you get into that? Well, I have an uncle that that uh, he he collected coins and he used to always show show me his coins and stuff like that. And and so one day I was at work. And in this car that got repoed, it was a plastic bag, a little baggie with a wheat penny in it. And that wheat penny, penny was a 1914D wheat penny. And I didn't know the value of that penny. I just knew it was a wheat penny. So I grabbed that penny and I just took it home and, and put it in a drawer and never messed with it. And I, I was reading... Uh, this magazine about uh, expensive or coins that showed it as sold in an auction. And they was talking about wheat pennies and they was talking about steel wheat pennies and that, that, um, 1944, uh, steel penny. And so I was like, let me look at this penny. So I looked at this penny and it was a 1914 D and so I said, this penny has value. And so I was looking on YouTube to try to find out more about this penny. So I started seeing people, oh, I go to the bank and I, I buy these boxes of pennies. So I started buying boxes of pennies to see if I could find more and error coins and all that. So I would buy wee penny, uh, penny boxes and I would buy half dollar boxes. I tried nickel boxes, dime boxes, quarter boxes, but you very seldom find good stuff in those. You'll find good stuff in penny boxes and half have boxes you don't lose any money if you don't find anything you just go back to the bank dump them and get your money back <laughs> that's right and it, it my wife she uh, she cuts hair for a living and there's no telling how many wheat pennies she gets uh brought in th and goes to, she goes to the cash register and gets all the wheat pennies and every every bit of change that looks funny and i'm like man people still uh spending this kind of money and then, of course not knowing it's worth more than that the actual value or the uh face value and of course, That's I right. guess a uh, few years back when uh, everybody got in a hard time, I, I guess some of the older people they started uh, bringing out their older money. And there was a guy down the road here that run a uh, little uh, uh, gas station. And of course, the old guy handed him uh, it was a five dollar bill. I can't remember what it was, but it it was valuable five dollar bill. And he told it. He said, "Sir, you want to spend that?" And he said, "Well, it's." It's American money. It's legal here in the United States. I, I can spend it. And so he was like, all right. So he took it. And then he was showing it to me a few days later. And then, I mean, there's no telling how many dollar bills or coins that you could find just doing that. So. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to tell you a story that happened to me uh, a few years ago. A, a lot of these kids, when their grandparents were saving all the, the old coins and they pass them on, they, they don't know what it is, so they'll spend it. They don't, they don't care about, about the, the coins. And so one day I was at a store, and you know that silver sound when they hit each other makes that, that high-pitched sound. Mm -hmm. So it was a lady in front of me who had a handful of Morgan dollars, and she was going to buy gas with those Morgan dollars. And I asked, I said, can I see one of those coins? And she said, sure. And she showed it to me, and she had 10 of them in her hand. And I said, are you going to spend these? And she's like, yeah, I'm going to buy $10 worth of gas. I said, well, how about I give you $10 for those coins? Those are pretty neat coins. I didn't tell her what they were <laughs> yeah, yeah. or what they were worth. <laughs> and she says, okay. And so she gave me the, the 10 Morgans. She said, I have 10 more in my car if you want those, too. <laughs> so I ended up getting 20 Morgan dollars for 20 bucks. <laughs> Man, that's a good deal right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I could run so. up on a deal like that. I know. I, I said the last uh, coin I bought, it was uh, uh, it was a nearer coin, but it, come to find out, it wasn't worth what I thought it was, and then that was that ended my coin career. I, I'm not a coin man. I'll find 
I'll find one here and there. But uh, like the 1914 uh, wheat pity you was just talking about, I have, mm-hmm. I may have found one in my time and just not know what it is worth. I mean, and there's a lot of special coins out there. You just kind of have to keep up with the uh, coin collected. That, that's right. And, and see, I, I collect coins, but I collect rare coins. I don't collect like, um, well, I collect, I keep the coins that I find. All the old coins, like I have some reals, I have some large cents, I have um, a lot of Spanish silver that I buy, but like mercury dimes and Washington quarters, and I don't buy those. I, I won't spend my money on those because I can find those. You can find those, you know, at what do you call those things uh, uh, at the Walmart stores and uh yeah, uh, cash. Uh, what? Yeah, you put your change those in it gives coins. you cash. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can, you know, those they'll spit those out, and people just think there's something wrong with the coins, and not knowing that the coin counter is not picking up the weight on that silver coin as, as a clad quarter, so they'll just spit them out, and they think something's wrong with it. And I found a few coins like that, but I don't, I don't buy those type of coins. I, I buy rare coins. They have to be rare for me to buy them. You know, yeah. I, I won't buy, I won't buy barber quarters. I won't buy barber hats. I won't buy walkers. I won't buy, I won't buy any of those coins. You have you ever found any counterfeit coins? Um, no, I don't. I don't think I've ever found any counterfeit coins. I no. found a. It was a counterfeit uh, half dollar. It was a uh, eighteen thirty six, and unfortunately, of course. Uh, my plan I worked at for 15 years shut down and I ended up selling it just to make ends meet. And then uh, of course I know where it's at. And the guys told me if you ever want it back, just let him know, or let him know. And then I could buy it back, but I just hadn't yet, but it was, it was a great find. It, it really was. So, but oh, uh, man, well, see, I, I don't find, see y'all, y'all in a part of the country where there's old stuff, you know, <laughs> old coins. I don't find those here. Yeah, me. And that's why I want to do a little traveling. Lowy <laughs> dropped half of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm old. Hey, you know, that, I, I want to go, you know, back back towards that area, to, you know, to try. I, you know, I have some large sets and stuff like that, but I, it's not the same as finding it. You know, I want to find one. Yeah, there's nothing like finding one. Hey, guys, we've got another big storm that's uh, coming through here in southern Kentucky. I tell you what, let's do. Let's go ahead. Uh, we're about three minutes out from when we were going to do it anyway. Let's go ahead and start this contest and make sure that we can get it in before we lose power because I'd have to go run downstairs and power the generator up and everything. <laughs> hey, Darnell, uh, this afternoon we went in a random number generator and we drew out four or five numbers. And uh, we've got those numbers in envelopes, and those envelopes are numbered one through five. I don't know what is in any of the envelopes, and the only thing that you know is that I told you we were going to have five envelopes and that I would let you pick a number. You haven't told me your number, and I didn't tell you a number. So uh, give me a number between one and five, and let's see if we can give this thing away. What do you say? Okay, if I don't pick you, I, I'm sorry, guys. I don't, I don't know who's in who's in the envelope, so don't be mad at me if you don't win. <laughs> I'm gonna pick number two. Number two, okay. Let me open number two. <laughs> uh oh. I think we're on Christmas <laughs> vacation here. Uh, number two is number sixty-seven, Mark Sloan. Mark, if you're on here, you've got three minutes to either call us at 270-495-0315, and uh, Jeff and Mark have both put it in there, or you can put it in the chat. Uh, you've got three minutes, and it is, I'll tell you what, I'm going to put a timer on my phone, and uh, then we won't have to worry about it. We'll just know. And I'll put it at uh, three minutes and go ahead and start it. And... Uh, well, we've got a call that is coming in right now. Uh oh. <laughs> who, who we got on the line? This is Mark. 
How's it going, Mark? Mark? Hey, 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 Mark, you just won a you just won a metal detector, and I tell you I'm what, you still had two minutes and thirty seven seconds to call too. <laughs> I'll make sure the make sure the lightning didn't run and knock me out. Yeah, I know it. Uh, congratulations, man! I tell you what. Uh, you know, I, I drew these numbers out, and uh, I, I tell you, I'm going to tell you everybody else that is that is, that was in here, and uh, I drew all of these numbers out, and I went to looking at them, and I've hunted with all of them but one, Jeff, every one of them but one I've hunted with, and I'm going to give you the names out right now, and then I'm going to let you talk to Darnell, and Darnell tell you a little bit about what you can expect from this machine and everything. But uh, the, those of you that did not win the detector, we're going to give you a Ruddix Radio cooling towel. And those are going to go to the Dirt Pirate Barb, Kristen uh, Keller, uh, Bird Dog, Chris Armstrong, Armstrong, and Aggie Hall. Those were the others that were in the other envelopes there. But Mark Sloan got drawn, and uh, we... Uh, uh, go ahead uh, there, Darnell, and tell him what he can expect out of this detector. You, first of all, you're getting an awesome, awesome detector, uh, waterproof, wireless, uh, different ways that you can really uh, make this detector work for you. Um, very light, uh, very sensitive. Uh, remember, you don't have to run your game wide open. To get deep with this detector, it, it's, it's going to get deep. Uh, great unmasking, separation, very well built, super light. You're getting an awesome detector, man. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank you for <clears throat> drawing my name, and uh, I sure do appreciate it. I'll put it to good use. If, if, if you have any more questions on the Amphibio, uh, I, I, uh, I'm on Messenger. Uh, you can message me, uh, go to my YouTube channel, I have some tips on the Amphibio there, uh, but if you want to just have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, talk about it, just message me, i give you some more tips on how to set that Amphibio up, how to run it, uh, what, what more to expect out of it, some good um, settings for you, but mainly just get out there and use it, dig everything, learn it, and it, it, it's going to get some good stuff for you. And, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, and, and hang on there, Mark. Don't leave us yet. Uh, okay. Let me go through these envelopes. In envelope number one was Barb. And uh, I'm just going to – I'm having to open them here and, and look at them as we go along because I don't have any Barb idea. Put, dang, uh, Darryl, he put the – he picked the wrong envelope. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's Darnell's fault, Barb. It's Darnell's fault. Oh! In, uh, uh, it, it, it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. In uh, envelope number three was uh, Tristan Keller. And then let's look in envelope number four. I had to waste five envelopes for this right here. Uh, I, I, should, I shouldn't have licked them, I guess. Aggie Hall, you were in number four. And then uh, let me open number five. I know who's in there. It's going to be Chris Armstrong, Bird Dog, but let me make sure that he's in there. Uh, yep, number 51, Chris Armstrong was in. Uh, congratulations to all of uh, all of you guys because there were 154 entries in this. So uh, you five out of 154. Of course, uh, Mark got the best deal. He got the detector, but you also get uh, you also get a uh, uh, an amphibio uh, metal detector. I mean, you get. Uh, I was fixing to give five of them away right here. <laughs> hey, Mark, get back on the phone to Delic. We need more of them. But hey, guys. We're, uh, in the in the future, we're gonna we're gonna give away some uh, more of these big prizes each quarter. So uh, you just have to you have to stay with us. And uh, Mark, uh, where are you gonna take this thing first? I have a, uh, a uh, pre-system. I've been digging at a little around here. Yeah, uh, found some pretty. You're cutting out. Start. The Stand over another corner. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of the holler. Get up on the ridge. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, we've completely lost you, Mark. Yeah, it, it's storming bad, and then yeah, yeah, it is. Anyway, uh, Mark, you know that you've won it, and uh, we will uh, we'll get in touch with you, and Tim Henderson will get this in the mail to you. And uh, appreciate everybody coming on and uh, and participating in this contest. But we can just we can go on now. Do you have another question? I tell you what, let's do. Let's open up the phone lines. There are people I know that want to talk to. Hello, world, Mister Darnell <laughs> Williams. Call in at two seven zero four nine five zero three one five, and uh, we'll let you talk to him. I mean, he's great to talk to, as you can hear him right now. He's he's a great guy. Sounds like a fun guy, and love to hunt with him sometime. Yeah, and I'll tell you something else, Jeff. You know, normally we have these, uh, we try to segment our shows out to where we have a little bit of flow and a little bit of structure to them. Of course, they will vary and everything. But uh, we got to ask one question in each segment. You started off segment one, and then Darnell talked the whole segment. Then I started segment two, and Darnell talked the whole segment. That's what we thats what we want out of a guest, is to do it that. It is. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> I think he'll be our next guest, too. <laughs> I, 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 I got some, some, some stories I, I could tell, you know, but, you know, I... I I, I'm just really uh, appreciate you guys having me on the Reddit, uh radio. Uh, chance to to meet you know new people. Uh, appreciate everyone who who support my channel, uh, watch my videos. I appreciate it all. I, I didn't expect my channel to to take off like it did. Um, I was just on youtube just showing my finds i'm not trying to be the man I'm, I'm just letting everybody know i'm not trying to be the man i'm not trying to be in competition with nobody just letting everybody know i'm I'm just on youtube uh sharing uh my finds and, and just having a good time that's that's what it's all about just having fun yeah and you i see, think darnell I, I could look at your videos and tell you're real and i mean you you, you <laughs> love every find you find and then i mean and it, you, you work at it, and then you, I mean, that's just the way it is. And then you can watch somebody's video, and then you can tell if they're really working at it or, I mean, if they're being their self and all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, you seem like a really great guy, so, but, I mean, it's, I mean, I, I'm, I I'm like I've detected with a few people that, that, that subscribed to my channel that came down and, and detected with me, and, and they said, Man, you know what? Is is that you more exciting in person than you are on your YouTube channel? <laughs> I get excited when you find stuff, but when I'm detecting, which I'm more excited because you're like a totally different person. <laughs> Where do you get all your energy from? <laughs> hey, we got a question in the chat. Uh, Will Hornbuckle wanted us to ask you: Do you ever water hunt? I haven't water hunt yet. I'm scared of the water. I can't swim. Yeah. <laughs> and something else that something else that nobody knows in Amarillo, Texas, the only water that you're going to find there is in an irrigation ditch, isn't it? That's right. <laughs> Either that or up at Buffalo Lake, and I don't know that I'd get in Buffalo Lake because of all the snakes and everything that are there. Well, well, now that you mentioned Buffalo Lake, that that is my first honey hole. Buffalo Lake, it used to be called Wild Horse Lake. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'll tell you a story about that. We went to Buffalo Lake one time, and uh, we were catfishing, me and my dad, and it got late in the night. It's probably 1 o'clock in the morning, and I, I told him, I said, I'm getting sleepy. And he said, well, just leave your line out, and you can lay down in the back seat and roll the windows down just, you know, just enough that you can get your rod tip out. And I said, well, how am I going to know if I get – a fish on he said just take that line there and wrap it around your big toe about four o'clock in the morning i got a big one on and he almost took my big toe off before i could get it and, and then somebody had the genius idea to invent one of those little bells that went on the end of a of a rod and i should have invented that because i sure needed one well i'll tell you them little bells man i was uh, I was there sleeping one night fishing, and of course, next thing I hear something ringing. And I thought, "What's that?" And I kept on reaching over, trying to slap the alarm clock, but it was that little bell going off on the end of the fishing pole. So, 
I, I take well, it. I got some fond memories of uh, Buffalo Lake. And, uh, of course, my dad passed away whenever I was very young. Uh, I was only 17 years old. And, uh, you know, we hunted and fished. And, and if he would lived long enough, we would have metal detected together because he loved to collect coins. Because, you know, in 1965, they stopped making silver. And he had the uh, foreknowledge to know that those things were going to be collectible, and so he he saved back a bunch of those and everything. I'd get in there every wow. now, and, I'd get in there every now and then, and and steal me a few and go get me a hamburger and French fries. <laughs> 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 That's just no, like, no, what, what does your family think about you metal detecting? Do you have anybody? Oh, no, none of none of my family uh, uh, goes metal detecting. They. They said, uh, why do you metal detect? I ain't never seen no black man metal detecting. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, when you're, when, they, say, they have when, now, haven't they? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, everybody's they, wanting your autograph now. What are they going to say about that? They, yeah, they say, they say, uh, they say, uh, when you, when you out there with that metal detector, people are going to think you're a bum. Looking for change. I said, well, if a bum is swinging a, you know, a five, six hundred, no, to a thousand dollar metal detector, and they ought to know that he's not no bum, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> That's right. People that don't know I, anything. I what, people that don't know anything about metal detecting, though, and especially the younger generation, they kind of look at it different, you know. But there's a lot of young people that are getting yep. into it now. Hmm. I tell you, when I find when I find that big old gold nugget, are you gonna think I'm a bum then, or are you gonna have your hand out? <laughs> they gonna have their hand out just like my family. They're like, well, what are you, what are you gonna do with all this stuff? And every time I find something, I say, man, this is pretty good find. Well, how much is it worth? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I can see where my collection's going. Less Avery grows up loving the hobby. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so so now they'll find a coin, and they'll say, well, what's this coin worth? I found this coin. Oh, it, it's not worth anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're finding stuff wanting to get rich, well, uh, you, you're you're going to be sorely disappointed. It's the history, people, that you that's find. Right. Yeah. And the, that's right. That's and the, right. And the mystery. I mean, on any right. given day, you're going to open up a hole and you're going to pull out something and, and you're going to say, I had no idea that I would find one of those, you know. Exactly. And that's, and that's what I tell people. I, they say, are you selling this? I don't sell any of my coins. I'm not doing it for the value or trying to get rich. I do it because of the history of it. That's why I metal the tech, not because of the value. I, I don't go out and say, I'm going to find something that's worth this much money. That takes all the fun out of it to me. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm not looking at value. I'm, I'm looking at the history of it. And I'm a history buff. I love history. And so that, that's why I do it. It's, it's fun. Yeah. Hey, guys, phone lines are open. We'd like to have some calls tonight. I think the storm's pretty well gone right now. Uh, 270-495-0315. And we got half redneck calling in. What's going on tonight, Mark Hoover? Here's trouble. Hello, world. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Darnell. They don't usually let me call in, but I want to tell everybody you are an absolute delight. You know, if you're having a bad day, I'm just going to call you, and you're going to make me laugh. I that. So, <laughs> thank you so much for being a guest tonight. It's I, I just can't, and I, and I do have one question for you, Darnell. I have to ask a question if I call in. So, I want to know if you will go with me to Five Mile Holler and detect sometime. Five Mile. Holler. What is it called? Five, Five Mile. mile. Is that a? Is that a joke or uh, are you being serious? No, it's a, it, <laughs> yeah. it's a real place here, and it's haunted. <laughs> uh, hang on the line. For, you, you, go ahead. You go, my leg, aren't you? No, no, no. I, I will tell you about uh, Five Mile Holler in just a minute. But we got another caller on. Just hang on for a minute, Mark. Uh, Six two one nine are your last four numbers. Who have we got? Hello. Well, go ahead, Mark. Floor's yours again. 
Yeah, Darnell. So Five Mile Holler, and, and Loy will tell you more about it, is a place up near Loy. And they've been trying to get me to go up there and hunt and uh, camp overnight for months. And I'm going to be going up there in three weeks, and I'm going to metal detect in Five Mile Holler. And they told me that it was haunted and that there was ghosts there. And I thought, oh, oh, oh. all I got to do is run faster than Loy. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, other Darnell. I had a guy, uh, Oki, uh, Surf and Turf Metal Detecting is his YouTube channel, and uh, he uh, he came. He he told me that he wanted to come and uh, and hunt with me here. And uh, I said, "Yeah, that that'd be fine, you know, that he could he could come and hunt." And he was up, he was up on uh, one of the hills, and in a minute he come down his eyes as big as saucers, and he said, "They somebody grabbed me by the shoulder and almost pulled me down." And uh, I told him, I said, "Well, there's a lot of strange things have happened here." Sixty two one nine, we got you on again. Are you there this time? I am. A helicopter flew over and cut me off. <laughs> as a low flying helicopter <laughs> who, who, who have we got you have kathy mall okay kathy you got a question then that you're wanting to ask or just to comment or what two questions okay i want to ask darnell what his favorite relic he ever found was and the next question is when you're detecting near um power lines I just can't seem to cut out all the noise. I have to really just go away from them. Well, my best relic I found was probably uh, not found many relics. I would have to say hmm, that's tough. Probably. Probably that, that that hat pin I found a few weeks ago. I think that's probably the best one so far. It was a, a British hat pin that I I thought it was a can. It it, it kind of overloaded the detector, but it was deep and it was you know, pretty pretty big. And it overloaded the detector. And I thought it was a can, so I was going to dig it anyway. And when I saw what it was, I knew it was military. And so that was probably my best uh, relic as far as power line uh, with the amphibio. It will it will interfere. I've noticed on my red race it won't interfere with the power line. The power line won't interfere with that with that detector. But with this amphibio, with it being so sensitive, uh, one thing that you can do is is you can try to turn your gain down. And that, that might help, or just try to avoid them, because it's a very sensitive detector. I don't, I don't think there is, maybe if you try three-tone, I, I think three-tone is pretty good by the power line. That would probably be either that or, or turning the game down. Okay, thank you. What kind of detector are you using, uh, Kathy? Well, the one, I had a, uh, I have a Garrett 8. AT Gold that I was under some power lines and it just went nuts. I mean, it, I had to shut it off and, um, get pretty far away and reset it because it, the numbers and everything just went crazy. A lot of times on the, uh, pro series, you, if you, uh, lower your, ga- uh, sensitivity quite a bit, it, it helps. Yeah. Yeah, I did that, but I mean, the numbers just flashed off and on. It just really went nuts, but I just recently got an amphibio and I just needed to know from him because, when I get around all these power lines, it does make a lot of noise. So you're saying go to three tone, then Darnell, and and turn your sensitivity yeah. down. Yeah, if you if you, three tone is is it's a very quiet program. Uh, I've I've have hunted by power lines in three tone, and I didn't get uh, interference in three tone. When I went in four and five tone, I did. So three tone would probably be your best bet. Or turn your sensitivity down because you don't have to have your sensitivity up to get deep with the amphibio. It will get deep. You don't have to open it wide open, run at ninety nine. You're not gaining any more depth at ninety nine than you are at ninety four or ninety three. You're going to get the same results in depth. 
There you go, then, okay. Kathy. Thank you. <laughs> we, we appreciate the call tonight, and uh, good luck dealing with uh, the EMI, the interference and everything that you're having, and good luck on your hunts, and uh, thanks for tuning in tonight. Thank you. You know, it never fails. That's where the best relics are going to be is right up under a set of power lines, and I run into that <laughs> yeah. a lot of times. <laughs> right. I mean, you've got a Confederate camp right up under – uh, power lines Ooh. or right next to one of the uh, 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 cell phone towers or something like that. Electric fence. Yeah, yeah. Electric <laughs> fence. Well, I, we can cut electric fences. <laughs> <don't have> any- <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. I didn't mean to cut you off. I know you got uh, another comment or two or a question or something. Well, no. I'm, I just wanted to call in and, and uh, tell everybody just how delightful Darnell is. If you ever get in a one-on-one conversation with him, he will absolutely make your day, and you'll be smiling. But let me tell you one last thing, Darnell, and then I'm going to hang up so somebody else can call in. If you and me go to uh, Five Mile Holler, we're going to uh-huh. change... We're going to change what you say from good hello world to goodbye world. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's haunted, I don't think I want to go. <laughs> Darnell, there there is a song, and it, the song was put out in the 60s. And there is a movie also. It's called Pharaoh's Army, and Chris Christopherson starred mm-hmm. in it. Mm-hmm. And it's about five mile holler. It's Mayshack Creek, is what it is. And it's it got its name because one of the boys that was that lived there with the uh, the early settlers and everything. Uh, the Indians took him and uh, killed him and scalped him and about half skinned oh. him and tied him to a tree. And uh, then at that same spot, people would ride their horses through there, and they'd feel somebody get on behind them. And uh, that's where Oki felt somebody grab him and almost pull him down to the ground. But in 1960, there was a song put out uh, of uh, an event that is supposedly true. And there were a couple of guys that they they went to what they call pie suppers. And it would be in a school building or a church building. And and they would have a gathering. And then boys and girls would get there. And and the girls would have pies that they had made. And then the boys would bid on those pies. and, And then you got to dance with her or whatever. But anyway, they were walking home. And this girl was walking walking home with them and it's kind of cool and so one of the boys said i'll just let you borrow my jacket and so when they got to her house she had to walk about another eighth of a mile up to her house and she went to take the jacket off and the boy said no you don't have to do that said uh, i'll just come back tomorrow to get it and uh so he came back the next day and knocked on the door and there's an old woman came to the door and he said yeah i said i uh i let your daughter borrow my jacket last night and i told her i'd come back today and get it and she said well, i don't know what kind of sick joke you're trying to play and he said what are you talking about and she said a year ago yesterday said my daughter mysteriously died and he said oh no so we was oh. with her last night and I said, no, you weren't with my daughter. And said, well, she came to this house. And he's, the woman said, no, she didn't. Said, uh, walk right on up the road right there to the graveyard. And her tombstone is there. And the boy walked up there, and, and uh, his jacket was on the tombstone. Oh, ooh, that give me the chills. Oh, no. <laughs> Do you want to go? And y'all want to stay up there all No, night. thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> all right well i'm gonna say good night and let you guys finish it out but hey darnell thanks great great guest tonight glad to have you we'll have you back anytime but uh thanks for being a guest tonight and i'll say good night now y'all good night okay mark hey thanks for everything that you have have done uh i know that you are the one that uh, had you contacted and talked with delic and got her to donate this uh, to Murray Branch Outdoors, and then uh, they graciously gave it to us as a giveaway prize, and so uh, just great all the way around. Darnell, there's one thing that I have to ask you before we close this show out. Where did you come up? Okay. Where did you come up with a saying, "Hello World"? <laughs> well, that saying really we we say it all the time. Me, me, and some guys around here. It, it's like saying, all right, or there you go. You know, it's, it's like a celebration word. And so I'm so used to saying it that whenever I found the first silver coin, 
I said, hello, world. That was, that's what I'm talking about. And, and so it just kind of stuck. You know, I, I don't try to say it. It's just something that I'm used to saying and I've always said. So so I just said, well, maybe I just fit it in because it goes with the coin. Like a coin's been in the ground for years and years and it's coming out and it's saying, hello, world. You know, so that that's that's where it comes from. It, it was just a saying that we always said, and and so I just figured I'd just use that, you know, as as kind of theme to to finding you know coins or whatever that's been in the ground for for years. Well, it's your you brand, know, and it has that, worked. Yeah, that is a great story. It really is, yeah. and I guarantee you that Hello World is going to be like a, a household name like Maytag or uh, <laughs> DE, something like that. You just wait. I mean, that's going I mean, it's going to go around the world pretty quick. Hey guys, we uh just added Denny Morrison on the line. What's going on tonight, Denny? Hi, Lloyd and Jeff and Darnell. Darnell, Hello, have you ever dug with the Nag brothers? With the Nag brothers? Yeah, nag, nag, nag. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty good hunters, too. Uh, Mark, and I have, Mark and I have hunted with them at CWPPO. That's a Civil War uh, hunt here in Ohio. But uh, that lady called in about uh, the power lines. And, Lloyd, you can try this, and Jeff also. I don't know if Dar- Darnell has one, but uh, the GPX, uh, Mind Lab GPX, if you put that in cancel mode when you're under a power line, it'll work just fine. Yeah, yeah. I've already done that, and uh, it does. You lose a little depth, but, uh, you yep. know, it, it beats not hunting at all. It sure does. Yeah, I got uh, several really nice uh, uh, New York buttons, cup buttons that way, under a mm-hmm. power line up at, uh, I don't forget, Spillman, or no, uh, Coles Hill in uh, Virginia. So, yep. Yeah. It can be done. Yeah. But like uh, Darnell said, uh, on any machine, you lower your sensitivity or your gain, and that'll help a whole lot. Yeah, it, it, it helps. And, you know, yep. everybody thinks, uh, Darnell, and you can back me up on this, but everybody thinks when you get a machine, you want to crank it all the way up. <laughs> but a lot of times, you're putting noise in the ground. Don't you agree with that? I, I, I agree with that. I, I agree with that. I didn't realize I that. I didn't realize that until I got a GPX, and uh, I was running nine thirteen on the gain, and uh, I accidentally and, turned mine down to four, and and I and started. Who actually, and who actually told you that, Loy? Well, after I said something about it, you agreed with me. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, I, I heard Diddy say something about that a few years back at DIV, and I thought, man, that, that crazy old man, he don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> and it, sure enough, I mean, he, that's about the only thing I've known him get right. But, I mean, <laughs> it, it was right. <laughs> just joking with you, Denny. Just sure. joking. I hear you. Yeah. Well, I'll get off here. I just wanted to give you that little tidbit on the GPX, and uh, Darnell's great uh, listening to you, and uh, my buddy's thinking about getting one of those machines. I got more machines than I got money, and I'm going to think all the money's in those machines. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, 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 great, yeah, great show yeah. and uh, great contest, Lloyd. Okay. Uh, you did a good job. Well, it wasn't me. It was. Uh, it's a whole group effort with uh, Murray Branch Outdoors and Knock to Macro and uh, the whole Relics Radio crew here. It was It was all of us headed in. But uh, appreciate the call, Denny, and uh, we'll talk to you later then. All right, See you, Danny. And Darnell, uh, give out your YouTube channel. Uh, do, is it just under, I can't remember, is it just under Darnell Williams or what? No, uh, you, you have to get a, a, a pencil because it, it it's long. No, <laughs> it, it is a long name. And, and, and I wasn't intending for it to be that long because I didn't know anything about setting up a YouTube channel, so I thought you just put your name and then what your channel was going to be, and it just made it all one whole name. <laughs> and so I, I I haven't had a chance to, to, to change it. I'm, I'm going to change it. It's still going to be Hello World, but it's not going to have my name, Hello World, and my last name. Okay. But my channel is Darnell Hello World Metal Detecting Williams, and okay. it should just be 
hello world metal detecting. <laughs> yeah. So, well, but, uh, but I know. It. I know that there. I know uh, that Ohio Relic Hunter Bill Marsh put it in the chat. I think uh, Nelson put it in the chat. There's several people put it in here, and so uh, you'll be able to go to the to the chat right there. Have you got a? You've got Facebook and everything too, don't you? Uh, I, I do have Facebook. Um, I, I'm, I'm on Facebook, but I'm mostly in the groups. Uh, I post most in the group. I really don't post anything on facebook i just mainly post it in groups uh facebook is really not my thing uh but i, I love being in the groups and looking at other, everybody else's finds and commenting on their finds and, and stuff like that but that yeah i'm on facebook though you can find me on facebook yeah well if you're not in the relics radio uh, group you need to get in that and also adventures in history. i am in the group okay good <laughs> I'm uh, I'm I in thought, the group, yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> that's where I seen it, seen first seen that badge at, and I was like, man, that's a good find. And then, of course, I, I love the uh, uh, naval stuff. Uh, yeah, the, the, there's no telling what what else is out there. There's just some areas I'm not able to get to because of the grass is so tall, and some of the areas they're not gonna they're not gonna mow. Uh, they're just gonna let it grow and die when when summer comes or when winter comes, but. How did I get a permission on a site that has no trespassing, violators will be pers- uh, prosecuted? I got a permission. I'm going to tell you how I got that permission in my next video. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's, that's a teaser a right there. <laughs> it is. <laughs> that is a teaser right there. Uh, I, I tell well, you, I've got a big lawnmower I can bring uh, to Texas if I have to. That's what I do, well, Darnell. I, I take my the, the, I take my riding mower and, and I get ready to detect somewhere. And you'd be surprised at the number of people you know. You'll say, "If I mow that ten acre field there for you, can I hunt it?" And sure, <laughs> you know, mow it away. <laughs> well, well, this this permission that I got, uh, it, it took some talking. Uh, it took showing him a uh, few of my videos. Uh, it, it took a lot of work uh, to get this permission because this person does not want anyone on this property at all, especially right now because it, it, it's infested with snakes. So I won't be able to hunt it this this summer. Uh, hopefully in the in the winter time I'll, I'll be able to get off inside this property. But I'm gonna let you know what it is. It's an old golf course. Okay, we'll never, uh, been, never been detected. We'll be looking for that, and uh, <laughs> we and cert- you know that's just like the power line deal. You got a uh, all your old golf course uh, golf courses. They used to be uh, the old city dumps, or I mean, I know in Virginia there was a golf course, and then that was where one of the main camps were. So uh, you never know what you're going to find in that golf course. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, it, it took some work to get it, but I, I got it done. Well, we'll be watching that <laughs> video then and uh, and see how you done that. We may learn us a tip or two here or something. Else. <laughs> but thank you for coming on tonight, and thank you for helping us uh, give this metal detector away. You've just been a fabulous guest. Thank sure you have. for having me. It was it was, a, it was it was fun. I enjoyed it, and my pleasure. Okay, uh, Jeff, I'll let you have your say, and then I'll close things out. Well, thanks, Darnell, for being our guest. I mean, you like he said, you've been a great guest. I can I can go on forever about that, but thanks for everyone in the chat, and uh, congratulations to Mark Sloan for uh, winning the uh, detector, and thanks to uh, Murray Branch Outdoors for uh, uh, giving him that opportunity. So, uh, but any, anyway, thanks everybody in the chat, and uh, you have a good night. Okay, and guys, if you like metal detecting shows like this, and by the way, thanks everybody for being here tonight. I mean, uh, we couldn't do this show without you. Would be no no reason. Might as well just get on the phone and talk to one another. But uh, you're crazy enough to come each week and listen to two and a half rednecks with a metal detector, me and Jeff and and uh, Mark Hoover. But if you like these kind of podcasts, check out Beyond Sight and Sound with Josh Kimmel on Sunday night and Wednesday night. He has a great show. All Metal Mode with Mike Hare and Gypsy Jewels is on Monday night at 8 o'clock Eastern. Uh, American Digger Relic Roundup with Butch Holcomb, Jeff Lupert, and myself. We're on every Monday night at 9 o'clock Eastern. 
Hardcore Metal Detecting has a show with Derek Asklar and Craig Talley every Thursday and Saturday night at 8 o'clock. XP Team USA with Dave Kimball and Grant Hansen are on every other Friday night at 8 o'clock. And obviously, me and Jeff will be right back here next Thursday night for another show. want to remind you, though, the Chattanooga Relic Show is coming up July 27th and 28th. Be sure if you come to that show that you come over to the broadcast table and let us get a chance to meet you, shake your hand, get a picture made with you and everything. So we'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Relics Radio. We really do appreciate it. Be sure and join us live every Thursday night at 8 o'clock Eastern here on Spreaker, or you can catch the archive show at Relics Radio on Spreaker, iHeartRadio, iTunes, and many other podcast outlets. Relics Radio is also syndicated on the Cutting Edge Radio Network and is broadcast around the world. Please take a minute and hit the like button and be sure and follow us so you'll get notifications of all of our upcoming broadcasts. You can also find us on YouTube at Digging with 7 or Tennessee Jeff, or you can check us out on our Relics Radio Facebook group page or Adventures in History on Facebook. If you'd like to get in touch with us, then send an email to relicsradio at outlook.com we'd love to hear from you we hope that you'll join us next thursday night and until then get out there and dig some history